Okay, Bayesian analysis uh, is used in uh, engineering and in other fields to uh, uh, make inference. Uh, uh, herein, I will present, uh, uh, my objective is to present some challenges uh, like theoretical, uh, algorithmic, and computational when you apply this to uh, structural dynamics. Uh, uh, with the Bayesian inference, we try to, if we have a, a structure to select a, a model for the structure or its component, its components to estimate uh, the parameters of the model. Uh, we can use all this in uh, model cal calibration, final ele element model updating, structural health monitoring, uh, and damage detection. And once we have uh, uncertainties about uh, parameters and also rank models with uh, Bayesian inference, we can uh, propagate this uncertainty in uh, structural dynamics. We are interested also in updating structural reliability. And also we can use this uncertainty uh, for optimal experimental design and uh, uh, decision. Uh, the Bayesian computational tools are asymptotic approximation and uh, sampling techniques. Uh, that uh, I will give a brief uh, uh, review of some challenges uh, on this, and I will try to give you a couple of applications. Uh, here I'm uh, interested in, in uh, my model is uh, usually a finite element model. Uh, parameters of uh, the models can be uh, stiffness related parameters, boundary conditions, uh, uh, and uh, uh, if I have a model, the values of the parameters, then uh, I have the excitation, then I can predict. Uh, uh, these are some equations of uh, motion, the usual equation of motion in structural dynamics. Uh, and uh, observations that I collect from a system could be, could be response time histories, uh, uh, frequency response function, model frequencies, and uh, uh, mode shapes. And I will... Uh, quantify uncertainties using uh, probabilities, and probability will uh, represent the degree of uh, belief. And uh, I will be using calculus of pro probability for making consistent plausible re reasoning. And once I have a model class, a finite element model with some parameters, uh, one could use the Bayer's theorem, as you see it here, to update the uncertainty in uh, these parameters. Uh, uh, probably uh, using uh, the likelihood and uh, the prior, and this is uh, the evidence. Uh, and in order really to build up the uh, likelihood, one has to uh, build up a, a model for uh, the model prediction error, which represents the difference between measurements and uh, uh, predictions, and this is an error. This is one form where you have uh, uh, additive error. Uh, the error could be due to measurement or model error, the fact that uh, whatever model you assume is not an exact representation of uh, uh, reality. And usually you make assumption for this, this is an assumption, that you have uh, an error which has zero mean, and a covariance uh, uh, structure. And once you've done something like that, then you can be build up the posterior in this form. And these are the predictions from your finite element model, say, given the values of the parameters. And also, you can make uh, model selections if you have several model classes, MI. OK, you can select all the best one, or you can rank them. But for, to do this, you need to compute this uh, 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 evidence, which is a multidimensional uh, integral. All right. The problem is here with the uh, covariance uh, uh, of the model error. Depending on what you assume, you get different uncertainties. Okay. I'm not going to solve this problem for you, but I'm going to at least illustrate that uh, uh, different covariance matrices uh, gives you different uh, uh, results. And uh, if you look in the literature, most of the people, they use uh, uncorrelated uh, predictions. Okay. And uh, if you have, for example, a finite element model uh, 
and uh, you assume that the predictions are uncorrelated, you could uh, think that uh, two sensors very closely to each other okay, gives you uh, different information, which is not uh, uh, really uh, true. We have uh, looked into this problem and we have uh, done a Bayesian model class selection to select uh, the best uh, uh, prediction error uh, model out of uh, models that we postulated. And I will illustrate all this with uh, a problem where we have a beam and we assume that the real system uh, or the, uh, the, 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 the beam behaves uh, as a 3D solid uh, element uh, uh, model. So we, we use uh, 3D solid element models to uh, uh, analyze uh, this beam and uh, produce uh, simulated data that we assume that they are, they are experimental data. And we use uh, a model class to do inference, which is just a beam model, 2D uh, beam model with uh, that many elements uh, and uh, nodes. And we use three different uh, model prediction uh, uh, error uh, correlation structures. Uh, one is, uh, oops, uh, A is uncorrelated. The second is uh, spatially, uh, exponentially correlated. And the other one is uh, exponentially uh, uh, damped cosine uh, correlation. And we just uh, try to identify damage at uh, this location here. And uh, here I plot the results of the uncertainty in this parameter, which is a stiffness parameter characterized damage. Okay? And the uncertainty for model A and correlated tells you that as you increase the number of sensors, as you keep on uh, adding sensors, you get more and more information. I'm assuming here that only four modes are contributing, no, no more. Okay? Uh, if you have four modes that contribute, you don't expect to add 170 sensors or 150 sensors and you keep uh, getting information. Okay? Something is wrong. Okay, and the fact that you assume a correlated model, this is uh, actually wrong because two neighbor, two neighbor sensors closely spaced together, they don't give you ec the extra information that uh, you would like to get. Okay, if you assume sp exponentially sp spatially correlated uh, model, this is a model that uh, 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 postulates only positive correlation. Again, you get similar uh, results if you assume uh, the, uh, the third model, then you can postulate positive and negative correlation. You get to the point where after something 30 uh, sensors, uh, you don't get extra information. Your uncertainty uh, now becomes uh, fixed. By adding more sensors, you don't gain anything. All right, so uh, one thing is, how you assign the model prediction error correlation is uh, very important. How to do that in reality, I'm not sure. I'm just giving you an example of this uh, importance uh, in an obvious problem that I know that I cannot keep adding uh, a lot of sensors and getting uh, more and more information. Uh, uh, here is a, a result where uh, by looking at the model evidence, it tells me that the correlated models are much more probable than the other the uncorrelated one, and of course here the exponentially uh, cosine correlation wins. Uh, let's go now to the Bayesian computational tools for structural dynamics problems. So this is the posterior that I have to uh, represent. I can do that with either asymptotic approximations where I can pre represent the posterior approximately by a, Ga uh, by a Gaussian distribution. And sorry, uh, I could use uh, gradient-based techniques to find the optimum uh, by minimizing the minus the log, or log of this, and also find the Hessian. Uh, such gradient-based techniques are sequential. I could do it also better using stochastic techniques like uh, covariance matrix adaptation that you uh, see over here, but also there are challenges. If you have uh, multimodal PDFs, this doesn't work properly, although you could uh, uh, improve. And of course, and the, computa the computational effort here depends on how many times you solve the system in, say, gradient-based techniques. Okay. 
Uh, the nice thing about stochastic methods for doing the optimization is that uh, you can uh, uh, do this in parallel so you can uh, exploit uh, parallel computer architectures. Sampling algorithms, uh, the main algorithm is uh, the Markov chain or the Carroll algorithm, but uh, also these algorithms are uh, sequential. Unless you have parallel uh, 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 chains, uh, you are going to waste uh, a lot of uh, time to find the solution or to generate samples. Okay, and uh, the challenge here comes from the model complexity. If you have large number of degrees of freedom and non-linearities, it might take you a few minutes to run a model. A few minutes, if you do it 10,000 times or 100,000 times, it's a lot of time. Uh, if, you, if it takes one hour to run a model, then uh, you, you, the, the computational effort is just excessive. You cannot do it, all right? So you need to have methods to reduce uh, this cost. And for sure, single chain MCMC algorithms are sequential, they don't help you at all. And these sampling algorithms can, uh, should also handle multimodal PDFs, unidentifiable cases, and peak posteriors in high dimensional uh, uh, space, you can uh, you really uh, have to devise uh, uh, methods to find where the support is. Okay. Well, in all this, uh, an algorithm that uh, is uh, used is this transitional uh, TMCMC is a very effective algorithm. It has an healing property. I don't have time to go through all the details of this algorithm. Uh, I would like to to only mention that what you do is you run a large number of very short uh, chains. And these chains can be run independently so you can exploit parallelization. Okay? And the fact it has annealing properties, okay, without going into details, you can use adaptive rigging to gain one order of uh, magnitude in computational effort. No more if you want to be uh, careful and do it uh, correctly. Usually in optimization, the computational uh, time, you can reduce it by 50%. Here you can go to close to 90% uh, depending on the uh, support again. Okay. And we have worked on these methods, parallelization, surrogate methods, and we have introduced uh, software. The, uh, we have also improved on uh, TMCMC. You can find all these. We have, we have uh, uh, the XTMCMC version that, uh, and a paper published that can discusses all that. A couple of papers, more than a couple of papers published that discuss all that. Further improvement on TMCMC, you can find it in this paper by the co-authors actually of this talk. Uh, and software that does this uh, parallelization efficiently uh, in uh, a multi-host uh, environment of uh, heterogeneous computer uh, workers can be found in, on uh, this side uh, with uh, our collaborators, with my collaborators actually in uh, ETH. Okay, and uh, this uh, pi for u software solves for you uh, the problem either with uh, asymptotic approximations using uh, 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 stochastic methods or with uh, sampling methods using uh, uh, improvements in TMCMC. A third thing that you can do, in addition to parallelization and surrogate, is to reduce your model if you can. And of course, we can reduce the model using, we know, this method, uh, uh, component mode uh, synthesis. It turns out that uh, for each value of your parameter, if you try to reduce your model, you spend much more time for the reduction than the time to just solve without reducing. So if you have to reduce your model and uh, run your model for different values of uh, uh, the parameters, it's best to do the reduction once and then use it, okay? This is not uh, trivial, it's not easy, it's not doable, unless there are some characteristics in your model, uh, like uh, uh, 
uh, your components are consistent with a parameterization sch scheme, then you can drastically reduce your model and the computational effort without sacrificing uh, accuracy. Uh, we have uh, three, four papers on uh, this e issue, and I'm going to demonstrate this with uh, these uh, bridge. This is a real bridge in uh, uh, Greece, uh, 530 meter uh, long. And we have constructed a high fidelity finite element model. The size of a finite element is limited by the uh, uh, box cross section uh, thickness. In terms of how you get uh, with the soil uh, uh, modeling using again finite elements and uh, represented by blocks, uh, we get 100,000 uh, degrees of, of uh, freedom. One uh, though can take components that behave linearly of uh, these uh, breeds and uh, reducing, reducing them using component mode synthesis. Actually, you expand the solution within the component in a reduced base using fixed interface uh, normal modes and interface constraint modes, and you keep only a number of these modes. Okay. Uh, it turns out if the component parameterization, the stiffness matrix, depends nonlinearly in one parameter, and the mass depends nonlinearly in, uh, in, uh, in the same parameter, H and G are nonlinear functions, then you, your reduced mass and stiffness matrices can be written in this form. This case are reduced matrices that they don't depend on the parameter theta. These are just known functions that gives you the dependence on theta, and that's your reduction. That's your uh, method to uh, uh, reproduce stiffness as ma uh, mass matrices for different values of the parameters theta without redoing the component mode synthesis. Okay. So we have applied these uh, uh, ideas. You can also reduce uh, interface degrees of freedom if you want. And for this structure, if you want to compute the first 20 modes uh, accurately, you can reduce the model from 1 million degrees of freedom to just 500 degrees of freedom by just breaking the structure into components. This is an arbitrary, uh, I have arbitrarily broke the structure into components and uh, by keeping only a few modes of these components. But it turns out that you could do much uh, more than this. Some of the components contains modes that we have kept that uh, only the static contribution is important. So you can take advantage of that and you could reduce this 500 degrees of freedom by one more uh, order of uh, 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 magnitude. It complicates a bit the analysis, but the idea is uh, the same. And the accuracy is uh, uh, very good. The error is small, smaller than 0.1%. Okay. These are uh, model updating results for uh, uh, this bridge, bridge for the deck, uh, deck, pier, and soil stiffness parameters, three parameters. Actual data from 110, uh, 110 points instrumented where we obtain the acceleration time histories, then model frequencies and mod shapes and 110 points. And we do the updating. Uh, and of course, the main thing here is that for the soil stiffness, we're completely uncertain where is the, what is that st stiffness. And it turns out to be close to the 0 0.4 of the nominal value that we assume. Okay. Now, you can use all of these ideas of model selection to uh, Bayesian model selection for structural damage detection, and that's what I'm going to do here. I will assume that I have uh, the bridge, different damage scenarios. I don't know which one is true, and each damage scenario, I have a finite element model, and I try with a finite element model to monitor just one area that I assume that could be damaged. I don't know. Okay, same here try to monitor just one area, one area here, two areas here, five areas here, and I'm trying using data to see, uh, okay, where, where's the damage? Okay, actually I'm trying to identify, to rank these models and uh, find out the uh, best model. That best model will tell me where the damage is and uh, uh, 
parameter estimation uh, associated with the damage area will tell me uh, what is uh, the damage. I'm assuming here that damage is very simple, stiffness reduction, but you could assume that it's uh, more complicated uh, than that. And I'm trying to run uh, uh, all these uh, uh, using uh, data. It takes, uh, it, uh, uh, what happens is that without model reduction, and without parallelization and without surrogate, it will take you one month and some days to do it. Okay, these are eight uh, models. If you do model reduction, you reduce the time to 40 minutes. Uh, of course, here we have uh, a database of eight models uh, where we chip them with the reduced, the reduced models and we can do all that. So we have done some work before. But these are model, uh, models ready to use. If you use target models, you reduce the time to five minutes. If you use parallelization, you can uh, bring the time to seconds. Okay, and this is uh, very uh, important. Uh, now, once you have uncertainties uh, calculated, posterior uncertainties calculated with your Bayesian uh, technique, you can uh, propagate uncertainties. And of course, in structural dynamics, you can propagate and find quantities of interest, the mean, the standard deviation, or uh, credible intervals, and so on. Or you can update your structural reliability. This is the integral that you saw. Usually, here, this one is the indicator function, uh, indicator function 0 or 1 doesn't have to be, and this is the prior distribution if you don't have data, or your posterior distribution if you have data, and you can solve that efficient method to solve for the prior distribution, sorry, uh, is the subset simulation and its improvements, and for the posterior distribution we can uh, also do this, and this zeta includes and certain parameters plus also loading parameters if your load is stochastic. So there are two sets of parameters here that you can work with this. I'm not going to present any, any result. Only the final thing that I'm going to present is uh, some results for Bayesian estimation and model selection for estimating the actually the uh, tension in uh, hangers, okay? Here is an arch bridge. I'm going to get the third hunger. Uh, I have uh, measured data from uh, 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 these measured data are uh, the six modes in the transfer direction and the six modes in the longitudinal directions. Only modal frequencies because I have placed two sensors, one in the transverse and the other in the longitudinal direction. And I use two kinds of models. Simple models, as everybody uses, like beam models, okay, and finite element models, complicated finite element models. The problem here was that uh, although this hanger has some support, funny supports, plate supports at the end, and although this hanger, if it's fixed at the lower and the upper uh, uh, end, uh, it has to have uh, in the transverse and in the longitudinal direction exactly the same model frequencies due to symmetry, actually experimental data tells you that this is not the case. So what happens, the supports have to be flexible. Uh, so we try to see what we, will you get if you use here a finite element model with uh, fixed supports, a finite element model with flexible supports. This is one parameter, this is a five parameter model. And what if we use a beam model with fixed supports, but we let uh, the length of the beam free to be determined from the data, or same model, but we let the length of the beam in the longitudinal and in the, flex and in the transverse direction to be determined uh, from the data, two different lengths, okay? These are just models which we could assume, or we use uh, springs at the upper end, where well, I only use here the upper end because when I analyze the finite element model, I realize that uh, flexible is only the upper end in the transverse direction. Okay. It turns out that model evidence tells me that between the fixed and the flexible finite element model, the finite element model, the flexible finite element model gives you much better uh, results. The evidence is higher, actually it gives you uh, much better fit. 
between these three models uh, tells you that this model here, where you have uh, freed the uh, length of the beam, this is a model in the transverse and longitudinal direction to be determined from the data, it gives you very good results. And actually, if you compare the Hanger axial load estimation for all these five models, uh, the four models here give you approximately the same results. The fixed model gives you underestimate the axial load by 25%. Okay. So these beam models, of course, they run in a few seconds or a few minutes. The finite element model here runs in uh, several uh, hours or day. Okay. And Despite the fact that we have been using six modes, modal frequencies in the transverse and six modal frequencies in the longitudinal direction, Bayesian inference tells you that, look, the tension load is uh, something like that with an uncertainty of 8 to 12 uh, percent, which has to be considered, okay? Uh, when you try to look at the safety of this uh, hanger. So, uh, I will skip the conclusions in order to accelerate this process. Okay? Thank you very much.